Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show how to create some really fun techniques on your cards using something as simple as ripped cardstock. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, just starting off with a piece of cardstock here and all I need to do is simply just go in and start ripping this. And you can kind of control the rip a little bit by staying close to it and kind of uh, controlling how it tears down. And if you want the edges to be a little bit jagged or a little bit straighter. So here we have one of our tears. Here we have another one that we can use. And I'm gonna tear it a couple more times just down the cardstock just to see if we can get some different kind of effects going here. I really like how this one looks with that kind of more jagged edge. Love that. And then let's do one more time down here just so we can get a variety of rips. Ooh, that one's really great. A texture there. All right, now I've brought in my piece of stark white cardstock here and I'm going to bring in one of the torn edges and kind of start it at the bottom of my cardstock. So right there. And then I'll go in with a little bit of rosy cheeks ink and start my blending. Now what I'm gonna now what I'm gonna do when I blend this is just kind of start at the bottom there and work my way upward. We're moving in kind of an upward motion rather than kind of a circular motion here. And I'm just going to ink kind of away from this edge and get a little bit of that faint ink color onto my card. All right, so once I got that edge inked, we'll lift it off. And I love that kind of little bit of uh, texture that you get from that rip. And that's why I said, you know, the more texture, the better. And we can kind of start swapping through now and using each one of these as kind of a stencil. And I'm gonna go in with some Prom Queen for my next color and just kind of softly blend this out. And once we lift that off, that one's got an even better kind of ripped, jagged texture to it. Next, we'll bring in Bee Sting, and I'm gonna go in with this super kind of jagged edge right here. And this especially is where we want to be really careful to just go in kind of an upward direction and not really swirl it around because this part is quite fragile. So we just want to kind of push it upward as we work and not do too much else with it. I think it's just beautiful. All right, next we'll bring in a little bit of traffic cone. We're going for kind of a warm color combination here. And again, this one has got kind of a fine edge here that we don't want to press up against too much. I'm just working my blending upward like this and then blend all the way across the piece. Lift that one off, check out that blending. Moving into some of the more yellowy colors. Here I have Guppy, which is one of my favorites. It's this kind of yellowy orange color that goes really well with this kind of warm color family. All right, lay down the next piece, which has got this nice jagged edge to it. And then we'll go in with Shooting Star, which is one of our brighter yellows. All right, and there we go. I love just the amazing amount of texture that this gives. It looks really beautiful in the end, and it's hard to believe that that was just done using ripped sheets of cardstock. Now, if we want to, we can always go in with a much lighter hand and blend a little bit of this color on to make those other areas in between just a little bit less stark white. So I'm just going in with the same blending tools that I use for these colors. I'm gonna really tap off any of the dark color on it and then just go right onto my surface and blend a little tiny bit of that color on. Again, with colors like Bee Sting especially, tap them off in your craft sheet to get a lot of the excess color off and then you can go onto the surface and just bring a little bit of that color in. This part comes down to personal preference, but I just don't love all the super stark white lines. So that's why I went in and blended in between with the same colors. And check out how that looks once it's all finished. This background looks kind of like a sunrise or sunset. And so I thought I would bring in the Owl Buddy stamp set and use one of these guys to finish off the card beautifully. I love this image with the owl sitting on the branch. I think it's a great grounding point. And then I'll go in and use my acrylic block to pick it up. All right, so I'm gonna ink this up with black ink. And then I'll position it where I want it on my card and stamp it down. Give it some good pressure, then we can lift it off. Then I'll throw over a layer of clear heat embossing powder. I like to do this whenever I do any water coloring after because it kind of keeps the water inside of the embossed lines. All right, then I'm going to bring some color in with my Simon Hurley Create ink pads. I just smoosh them onto my craft sheet to kind of create a palette of colors that I want to watercolor with. This is my favorite way to color in the images and I'm gonna share lots of tips for coloring. All right, when it comes to water coloring anything in, I like to start off first with a layer of water down on the surface. This kind of helps prime the cardstock and prep it for any color. If you go in without this layer of water, I find that the ink tends to kind of sink right in and you have no time to blend, which makes it really difficult to get a great looking color. I can then go in with the first layer of ink here and I'm using still a little bit of water on my brush to make sure that we get a nice kind of smooth wash of color across the surface. 
and I'll go in with more color, bring it in, and you can see nothing is sinking in too fast, so you can get a nice even layer of color done once you start out like this. Once we got that first layer of color, while it's still wet, I'm gonna go in then with a little bit less water. This is why I like to use just a paintbrush instead of a water brush because you can have full control over how much color you add. And then I just add some shadows here and there. So wherever different body parts meet, like his head meets his body, I'll add a little bit of a shadow there and then kind of blend it out just using a little bit of extra water. I'm not super particular about where the shadows go, but I do like to add them because I find that it makes the image a little bit more 3D and kind of really brings it to life. Then I'll add a little bit of orange to his beak. For this branch, I want a little bit of a darker color, so I'm dipping into that ink pad color again. And here I'm going in with barely any water at all. I'm not looking for a super smooth color, just to kind of lay a really dark tone down. And then we'll just grab a little bit of green for those leaves. To make this a little bit more interesting, I'm gonna cut it so that half of it is still there and half the cardstock is gone. I love to do this. So you can either use kind of a ruler or a straight edge, but I also have this little rotary trimmer here. And all you need to do is kind of just trim up until the owl. So you'll see here, I'm gonna bring that blade up right until the owl there. So right up there, we'll move this down then, and then we can do the same thing from the bottom, moving upward until we reach the image. Once the two straight lines are cut, then all you have to do is go in with the scissors and cut out the image that's on this side. For this, I'm using my Fiskars Spring Assist scissors. You guys know if you've seen my videos for a while that I love these because they spring back out at you so your hands don't get super tired when you're cutting because you don't have to open the scissors back up. And also, you can really easily get into some of the smaller, more detailed areas, which I really like. All right, so there we have our image, and because that white strip is there, it just adds a little bit more detail and interest to the card. All right, I'm using the sentiment that says, hoot hoot hooray, have a great birthday. And then I'm going to heat emboss this on black cardstock. So I'm using my Versamark ink, and actually, I can't forget a little bit of antiseptic powder bag before we go, to make sure that no embossing powder sticks where I don't want it. And then I'll go in and stamp this down. Throw over a layer of my white heat embossing powder, tap off the excess, and there's still some stray embossing powder sometimes, so I find that just lightly blowing on it kind of gets rid of any of the excess. Sometimes flicking is a little bit, kind of knocks off some of the powder, which you don't want. All right, then I'm gonna heat this up until it's nice and bright white. Sometimes for, the, for me, just cutting this out on a rectangle kind of feels incomplete and doesn't make the card look super finished. So I like to go in with my Fisker Spring Assist scissors again and just fussy cut right around the edge. I do it pretty loosely. It's not like I do when I go in with the image. I just want to give it a little bit less of the cardstock backing and then I can place this down. All right, and there we have our finished card. I really love how this one turned out with that ripped paper texture all along the side there and the texture that that really adds. And it's such a simple technique with just cardstock. For this next card, I'm gonna use these ripped inked strips as a little bit of texture and dimension for the card. So here I'm bringing in that same color combination of the ink strips that we used. And I'm going to kind of layer them on my card. All right, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of my tape runner adhesive. And you want to especially add adhesive kind of around the ripped edge there so it doesn't start coming up. Then I'll adhere that down. This one gets really thin on the edge there, so we're adding lots of adhesive onto that edge to make sure that it stays down. All right, this technique is super simple, but I love that it's using up all of the pieces from before that would otherwise be scraps. So it's almost like we're getting two cards from just that one technique, which I, Always I'm appreciative of these two for one cards. All right, then super simply, I love these tonic shears and I'm just going to go in here and cut this down. And these layers get kind of thick because there's lots of cardstock in here, but it seems to be able to cut through a lot and I love these scissors for that. So I'm just going around the edge and cutting through to make it nice and even. All right, to finish off this card, I'm gonna go in with one of these flowers from the Sketch Floral stamp set. I love these and I think they're a great addition to any simple card. All right, I'll ink this guy up and then we can stamp it right down onto a piece of my stark white cardstock. And then to seal the black ink in and also because I love that finished shine to it, I'm gonna throw over a layer of clear heat embossing powder and heat set it until it's clear and shiny. All right, if you guys have seen my videos lately to color things in, you know that I've loved using these little mini ink blending tools. This one happens to be from Altenew, but Ranger has some great ones too. And all I do is kind of, I have this same tool for lots of different colors, so I wipe off any excess color, I get this first color started, and then I can go in and add a little bit of shading to my image. And for these flowers, I like to just add a little bit right in the center, and then kind of fade it out to the edges. 
and it's a super simple way to color these images in without having to go into all of the little details. And from the same set, I'm just going to stamp down this simple little bold hug sentiment. It's one of my favorites. And a little clear he'd embossed that too. All right, here is a look at the finished card. I love that we were able to take those strips that we used for blending on the other card and adhere them down for lots of texture and an amazing colorful background. Now for this last card, I'm gonna use a little bit of the four inch mint masking tape. If you guys have seen my channel, you guys know that I love this stuff. It is so awesome for doing masking techniques, die cutting out of, I just love the larger surface area of this tape. So I'm gonna go in here and do a similar thing to what we did earlier, just get a rip going down my tape. You want kind of that jagged edge and that awesome texture that it gives too. Place it down here, kind of at an angle like this for a little bit of interest. And then I'll place my second piece with the other rip pattern, which is gonna kind of match up. I'm gonna line it up, place it down on your card. Right then, give the edge some good pressure, and we're gonna go in and do a little bit of blending. All right, so starting off with a little bit of psych, I wanna do kind of a brighter color at the bottom here. And again, these ripped edges are a little bit more delicate, so you do kind of want to work upward like this until we get more to the center. All right, then I'll move into Overzealous, which is kind of this lighter lime green color, and start blending this inward. I'm using these domed blending tools as well to kind of make a little bit less of any harsh marks on your card and be able to blend the colors super smoothly. And if you want to, you can always go back in with the same color as before, and just go back in to make sure that that blend is really nice and smooth. All right, now working our way into the blues, we're moving into some clear skies to blend together with that green. Love how this is looking. And then this is gonna kind of overlap to create a little bit of a darker green in between. And then lastly, up top here, I'm gonna go in with some Crown Me Purple to tie it all together and finish off my color combination. All right, now I wanna use this Sketch Floral stamp set again to create almost a little garden of silhouette flowers. So I'm just going to take some of these floral pieces out, just kind of work out to make sure that they're all going to nicely fit. All right, so I'm just going to ink this up with some black ink. And the reason why I'm doing black is because I love the look of this darker silhouette against the super bright colors that we have blended down here. So just going to stamp this down, give it some good pressure, and again, we still have that tape there so that it's masking this off from the rest of the background. Gonna stamp them down. And lastly, I'll go in with my Lily and stamp this one down. All right, so once that stamping is all completed, we can then go in with our mint tape and unmask this. And the thing that's awesome about mint tape is I know it's not gonna rip the cardstock because it's a pretty light tack adhesive, but it does a great job at masking off all of that color to give me this really cool kind of ripped edge technique. All right, and then I'm gonna use my Misty to finish it off with the sentiment because I wanna make sure that it's stamped perfectly after doing all of that work. So place it in the corner here. And I'm gonna use the same Sketch Floral stamp set. I love these bold sentiments. And I think I just wanna stick with, you are so beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna kinda of line it up here, and then my biggest tip is to use this grid on the surface here to just make sure that it's lined up. And if it's not, you can kinda of push it or move it a little bit until it looks fully aligned. And I think that's nice and centered. And then I can go in and stamp it down. All right, and this is why we do it in our Misty because it didn't stamp fully, so we can go one more time and get a nice jet black image. All right, so here is a look at that final card. I love how this one turned out with the ripped edges on the top and the bottom, using the mint masking tape to mask everything off. I love those florals right on top to give it that nice silhouette effect as well. All right, you guys, I hope you really enjoyed today's video and seeing the different card making techniques using just ripped cardstock. It's so simple, but it's very impactful. Leave a comment down below on which card was your favorite, and also linked down below in the description box is a full supplies list to everything I used, and those links help support me, so I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!